Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about why we love music. And I've talked about it before. And um, today, I'm, I mean, there's, there's a couple reasons why we like music. In fact, today I'm going to focus on a reason that I haven't hinted at before. So, as a background, um, the reason that we evolved, came to have culturally evolved uh, music in the first place, music is not part of our uh, instinctual biological heritage. As I've argued in my earlier book, Harnessed, um, how language and music mimicked nature and transformed ape to man, is that music has culturally evolved over time to sound like something that's incredibly evocative to us. And what is one of the most evocative things in a human's life? Well, it's other humans. And we've already, we already evolved to be good, even with our eyes closed, at hearing the sounds of humans moving in, in our midst and being able to recognize what their behaviors and their actions are. Where, what their movements are. Are they moving closer to me? Are, are they coming directly toward me or just going to pass me? Are they turning? Um, are they involved in, you know, running? Are they emotional? Are they angry? Most of these behaviors, we have exquisite senses to be able to, de to detect what their behaviors are. We're not uh, consciously aware of these, however. So in my book, Harnessed, um, in addition to talking about the origins of language and writing, which was in Vision Revolution, um, and how these things actually are shaped or, or, or sound uh, like facets of nature, which I'm not going to talk about right now. Um, I argue in depth in more than half of, of the book Harnessed that music itself is culturally evolved to sound like, have the signature features of what humans sound like when we move. And so this is one reason why we're just listening. This is not, we're not listening to it all day long and spending billions of dollars um, uh, uh, to hear some mathematical puzzles that are being thrown at you. Like some people think, well, it's just, it's trying to set up some repetitiveness and then break that pattern. And in, in some kind of mathematical platonic realm is sometimes these certain kinds of theories. There's a, there's a number of, of, of theories, I'd say they're all bad theories in my opinion. But one of the oldest kinds of ideas, going back to the Greeks, is that somehow music sounds like movement. And so that intuition was there. And in Harness, what I do is I, I really flesh that out rigorously. I say, well, okay, what are the, what's the grammar of human movement? What are the, the fundamental signature features of humans when they move and work out the, the regularities of that and then show that across human mu move, music, it has exactly those uh, peculiar signature features. But, and I've hinted at that at various times before, there's a second part of music that most of us um, aren't, uh, they, I think you've implicitly noticed it, but haven't consciously noticed. And this is another reason why music is enjoyable and it gets at a lot of other kinds of experiences that we have. So let me sort of lead into it by, lead into it by mentioning, uh, when you first hear a song, and it's, uh, you know, it's a song that you might eventually come to like a lot, but often if you, you may have noticed that the first time you hear a song, you're not that excited about it. You know, it, you're hearing it and it feels quite different. Then once you get to know it, so that you really know the song, it feels quite different. It's it's now I like it. Well, I had to get used to it. And you, you may have come up with some kind of um, reasons for why you think that now you like it, whereas the first time you weren't that into it. And what uh, what really is going on? Um, and let me let me give a hint to you as to uh, these are some bird experiments done at the University of Chicago back in the '90s, I believe it was. Um, so they uh, listened. Um, they had electrical recordings in the bird's brain. And so then they were feeding, you are just you know, letting the bird listen to certain kinds of bird songs of its own or, or some other bird songs it hadn't heard before. And uh, there's a, then a, a, a predictable temporal delay because it's hearing this bird song for the first time. And so the, the time that the, the parts of the brain that were lighting up to that bird song were delayed by, you know, I don't know, 50 milliseconds, something like something you would expect that was sensible given the, the amount of temporal delay that has to occur given the number of neurons between the ears of the bird and, and that part of the brain. Now, what the, they also then noticed was that once the bird got to know that song that it was listening to, then the firings of the neurons inside the brain were no longer delayed. They were in time with the music. Now, let's just think about that. What does that mean? That means that is, I mean, of course, obviously, the first time that it hears the song, obviously, it, it realizes. I mean, it can't be know that it's going to come. But once it, once the information comes in, the brain catches up and is actually playing the music, so to speak, in its own mind, simultaneous with no delay relative to the external music. The brain, and I've talked, uh, I'll talk about this another time, is constantly engaged in extrapolating. Um, uh, extrapolating into the near future to get in time with the world and our own behaviors. And in this case, it's basically singing along in advance what it knows the music to be. 
And so it's, it's in time with the music. It is now a participant in the music rather than just a passive recipient. And this is the other reason why music is so much fun. This is, for example, what's more fun, driving your car or sitting as a passenger in your car? When you're sitting as a passenger, you're a passive recipient. It can be fun potentially, but really the fun is driving the car because now you are one with the machine. You are are, are not just a, a recipient of the behaviors, you're actually being able to control it. Now, of course, you're not actually controlling the music per se, but in your singing along with it, let me just start uh, uh, mowing out here. But in your singing with it, you are now really a participant. You are part of the, you are part of the music, and you're contributing to it, even if it's only singing in your head or uh, creating the very sounds of that artist that you like. In some sense, you're reproducing that in your head and being, you know, uh, uh, as you get the real music is coming in, it's confirming that you're right, confirming that you're right. It feels fundamentally different to hear a song that you already know um, because you become a participant in the music and it feels fundamentally more enjoyable because you are now part of the experience. And so you are not, not just listening to the sounds of an evocative mover moving around you, moving in your midst, engaged in behaviors. You are, are also a musician. You are also a vocalist just internally in your own head creating that along with the music. Right. So this is why it's, it's a much deeper experience than we realize, and you're a much more active participant than you ever realized that you were. And that was your science moment.